The night was dark and the fight was ended. The moon shone down O'Connell Street. I stood alone where brave men perished. From there they'd gone, their God to me. The first I saw was a gray-haired father Searching for his only son I said, old man, there's just no use searching For up to heaven your son has gone The old man cried out broken-hearted he fell upon his bending knees, said I knew my son was too kind-hearted. I knew my son would never yield. The next I saw was a red-haired maiden kneeling by her lover's side. She prayed to God, her heavenly Father, to guide and guard him until he died. And the last I saw was the dying rebel. Kneeling low, I heard him say, God bless my home in dear Cork City. God bless the cause for which I died. My only son was shot in Dublin, fighting for his country boat. He fought for Ireland and for Ireland only. The harp, the shamrock, green, white and gold. Uh, thanks for... Uh, Bernie Carroll for that uh, uh, lovely song. Um, I now call on Joe McHale to read uh, the Roll of Honour of the East Mayo Brigade. The East Mayo Brigade extended into <coughs> South Sligo and parts of Roscommon. And you will see two names in particular, a uh, couple of names in the, the Nearys and the Mulrennan family in that. So the East Mayo Brigade names are Sean Corcoran, Thomas Flannery, Seamus Mulrennan, Dr. Frank Farron, Eugene Kelly, Joe Watch, Paddy Boland, John McGowan, Willie Morden, Thomas McNicholas, Michael Cohn, Pat Mulrennan, Peter Neary and Tommy Neary, and Michael Duffy. But it's been a historical year. I think we also should remember the rest of the volunteers who died in this county. And we start off with John McBride was executed in 5th of the 5th, 1916. Peter Sears from the Neil was killed in action in July 1920, but not in this country. He was killed out in the Indian Mutiny. John Ballas and Duke Kennelly in 23 as well. Sean McNeil, Valley Cry died in hunger strike in the 19th of the 4th, 1940. Michael Gohan on the 3rd of the 6th, 1974, in Clark Prison. Frank Stagg on the 12th of the 2nd, 76, Wakefield. Thank you, Mr. Moore. The proclamation is going to be read here by uh, Brendan Hughes. And Brendan Hughes is basically in the uniform of uh, the Irish Volunteers, the rifle, the belt, etc. Uh, he's, Brendan is also, uh, Brendan's father was P.R. Hughes, who was uh, commander of the 3rd Battalion of uh, the South Mayo um, IRA Brigade. So for that reason, we have uh, asked Brendan to come along uh, this afternoon and read the proclamation. Public Naharan, the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, 
in the name of God and of the dead generations from which he receives her old tradition of nationhood. Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment. And supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying on the first and her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, we have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally, and oblivious to the differences, carefully fostered by an alien government which has divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, John McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Paulie Cage Pierce, Eamon Catt, James Connolly, Joseph Plunkett. Good evening, Mahagut. Thank you very much for coming along. And I'm now going to call on Bernie Cardle to conclude the, proceed the proceedings by singing the national anthem. <laughs> Well, I've got a little bit of 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 a little bit